I think it's a piano who wants to be an organ. <laughs> or maybe it was an organ and now it's trying to become a piano. Of course, it's a hybrid instrument, and it's interesting to look at its history because before the piano, we had harpsichords and clavichord with pedal board, as of course the organ has. The first composer who wanted a piano with the pedal board, as far as I know, was Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. So it was a good start. In the mid of uh, 19th century, especially in German and in France, pedal piano was more popular than earlier. That's because pedal piano was used as a practice instrument by organists. It was much easier and cheaper to practice at home. So that's why companies like Erhard started to make pedal pianos. And even Robert Schumann in Leipzig became an enthusiastic pedal piano player and he actually even composed three opus numbers, opus 56, 58, and 60. And this music is quite interesting because it's the first uh, music published for pedal piano by a great composer, because Mozart did not publish anything for pedal piano. And this music also shows how the pedal board can just be a different character. You know, the pedal piano also is like two different instruments fighting one against the other. They can be in harmony, they can merge, but they can also be in contrast. As I said, um, it got a kind of a, a commercial success because it was used as a practicing instrument for organists. When organists did not need a practicing instrument anymore, the market went down and the uh, Erard Playel stopped producing pedal pianos. One of the reasons for which the uh, pedal piano had not so much popularity is also related to the problems of transportation. And uh, if you want to make an international tour or uh, to send a pedal piano in China, you know, it's not going to be so easy unless you use normal pianos that you find in concert halls. So this is what I thought when I realized that if I wanted to start giving concerts around the world with pedal piano, I needed a practical solution using local pianos. So as you could see here, we are using the two normal Steinway pianos that are in this hall. In, uh, in about one hour, we could set up all the, all the system. I can just send the bench, the pedals, this central unit, and the uh, spare legs, and all the rest, I mean, the two pianos, are just two normal pianos. So how this instrument works? Let's see. We have a lot of pedals. We have 37 keys in the pedal board, so they cover a range of three octaves from, for example, this lower note, which is the lower note of the piano, till this one. But as you could see, I'm always using doublings because these three pedals are the three stops. If I only have one stop, I have only one note. But if I put on the second stop, the same key will get a higher octave note. Not anymore like this. But if I put on the two of them, I get a doubling. So this is the way I play this instrument. I always have doublings in order to have a sound which sounds completely different from a normal piano. You see, it's wider because, of course, the doubling makes the production of more overtones, so a different sound. And then, of course, we have the three normal pedals of the upper, upper piano. And this is the sustain pedal of the lower piano, which can actually be combined, so I can press together the two sustain pedals in order to get resonance also in the pedal board. 
On the pedal piano, these keys are like the piano keys. Of course, they are dynamic. I can really have a quite a wide range of dynamics, like in a normal piano, because actually they are just depressing the keys of the second piano. Maybe you could even see that. As you could see, there is some uh, space in order to get control, and you, I could even play from half key, or even less. For repeated notes, I can use the double motion. The only difficult part is that our feet don't have the same sensitivity of, of our hands. Actually, when I play the pedal piano, somehow I try to feel the sensitivity, the touch, under the skin of the feet in order to get a better control. Actually, the pedal piano gives you the opportunity to rediscover what we can do with the feet. I'm a pianist. Um, still, today, of course, 90% of my concerts are for normal piano, and I'm happy about that. But, of course, uh, when I play the pedal piano, I have to change, I have to adapt my piano technique to this new context, because I cannot put my feet on the floor, and so the body balance is completely different. So even the way of using the hands is different. And even the pedal, the sustain pedal, of course, is there, but I cannot use it as much as I would like sometimes. So the sound production is different, is more transparent. And uh, contrary to what people would guess, when you have a pedal piano, even if you have two pianos, the result is not a louder sound because you cannot use the weight of the body in the same way. The increase of sound is not in quantity, but in number of voices, in uh, different quality of sounds. And it was very interesting what happened to me when I started learning the pillar piano about 10 years ago. The first six months, I could not get any improvement. Uh, I had no independency from the hands, so whenever I played anything, with my legs, I would play the same note with the left hand. Suddenly, one day, I wake up and went to play the piano and I could finally play different things with my left hand and the feet. So something happened in my brain. So I think it's good to know how our brain works and find the way to use our brain in the best way. I mean, I'm not uh, so happy about uh, being in a hurry or uh, you know, being forced to do things so fast. It's much better to have the time to think how to do things, to program them, and to enjoy life, finally. <laughs>